let's start with the fun part then and, and the music in this film, which is quite fantastic. So if you were stuck in space, what would you like to listen to? Um, an instruction manual of how to, to get, get home. <laughs> on a loop? Um, on a loop, yes. Just like, hmm. Build a spacecraft. How do I do that? Um, I'd do like a Bob Dylan mashup with Biggie Smalls. Cool. Remix yeah. it and send it back. Because Biggie Smalls would make you less depressed. Bob Dylan might. Well, exactly. exactly. You know, there's, there's, there's a combination <laughs> would be all of human yeah. life. Yeah, something to dance to, for sure. That's for sure. And then something to just stare out the window. And <laughs> a little know, David Bowie or something. Yeah. Con contemplative mm -hmm. uh, music. What, what I loved about The Martian is that I felt like I was there. You know, most space movies feel unattainable. This one is so immersive. Did you feel that when you read the script that it was so attainable and accessible and real to the audience? Yeah, because I think it's about human beings. And when you see Mark on Mars, you don't feel like he's this distant sort of astronaut character. He's a human being. He's a guy who grew up and who ended up being on, on Mars by himself. And you sort of relate to so much of what he's going through that I think it connects you a little bit more. Yeah, I think uh, Ridley Scott's movies in general are always so immersive, you know, like he does have this kind of 360 view of, of filmmaking and uh, so being on the sets, you know, being in the movie, you know, you kind of, you're totally immersed in it and then you're kind of aware even when you're reading it that because it's Ridley, it's going to be pretty immersive for the, for the audience, you know, and, uh, and that's really his trademark that he allows whatever world he creates, you know. Um, sure. You know, he allows you kind of to feel that you're you're there. It's like it's part of his extraordinary skill as a as an artist. You know. Yeah, agreed. Do, do you get to meet people with similar responsibilities in real life as your characters, or it's a lot of Google and Wikipedia? Well, uh, for my character in particular, I didn't meet any media uh, relation. People, but we did speak to people at the European Space Agency. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Which was exciting. Yeah. Yeah. They were very cool, and I spoke to a guy who had led missions, you know, into space, you know, so um, was very informative about the kind of pressure that you're under and, uh, and the kind of negotiations that take place. And, the sort of lack of compromise that happens, actually, that it's, yeah. which is different to any other job in a sense, because you know, even at a high level, <clears throat> you always think that people can try and find a middle ground. But actually, with this kind of decision making, you know, if you have a disagreement with your boss and you see things a slightly different way, I mean, there's so much at stake that you just you sort of have to stand your ground, you know, mm -hmm. and that's um, that it's a sort of very direct and you know, a m m sort of muscular way of. Uh, of operating, you know, and I think that all the space agencies have to do that, you know, um, and the JPL, the Jet Propulsion Lab, and, you know, and all of those elements are in the film of just people who can't quite compromise, you know, they have to come up with <laughs> solutions, you know, um, otherwise disaster, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Was it a little bit like three films happening at the same time, because we have three microcosms in this one? And, yeah. and how involved were you with the rest, or you just saw it on screen? Not really involved. Well, they hadn't that even much. started shooting. Yeah, we did our section first, and then. Then it was space yep. stuff. And yeah, then Jessica Chastain and the Kate ship. and Michael yeah. Pena and those guys, and then, um, and then it was Matt. Yeah. Matt on Mars. So, what did you think when you saw it the first time? Was it in Toronto? I'd seen it before, actually. Yeah. Before I, I just saw it because I couldn't go to Toronto. I just saw it last week, and I was, um, yeah, blown great, away. Great. <laughs> it's an amazing, it's a great film. Yeah, my favorite film of the year, I have to say. <laughs> oh, cool. and, and, and it's because there's so much humor in it, exactly at the right places. It's it's like a very subtle recipe. Uh, th that's what I think Ridley did best. Don't you agree? Yeah, there's humor in it. Is really great you know uh, that it's sort of and genuinely funny and heartwarming and charismatic and interesting you know and uh, but I also love the science of it all yeah you know, like the kind of um, you come out of the movie feeling smarter mm -hmm. <laughs> you know I came out feeling really smart yeah we, we got we got really smart I was really clever 
Brilliant. Yeah. You, 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 I was a brilliant <laughs> scientist yes. for about 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's what acting is all about. That's he set up all these lights. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's busting ghosts <laughs> next. Exactly. You see, now she's, you know, bum, bum, yeah. learning ding, every day. Ding, ding, every time. Ding, ding. <laughs> Everyone's so excited oh. about this. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Including me. <laughs> <laughs>